ओके जय हिंद ऑल माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर सारिका कालरा एज अ एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर वर्किंग एज अ एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज and today i am discuss about the srm motor that is variable reluctance motor or you can say it's a switch reluctance motor and it is a sub it is a special topic which uh, consider uh, which uh, it is in uh, electric drive subject that is the code is kee075 right so before start with this uh, switch reluctance motor will discuss some kind of like why we you go for this switch switch reluctance motor it's a special kind of motor uh, like if you characterize the motor uh, classification if you see the motor classification some kind of motors are dc some are the ac and some motors are under the category of special kind of motors so these special motors are are used to drive the special kind of loads right in the conventional if you see uh, like um, uh, some decades before uh, you see that the some dc motor and the ac the, the more conventional induction motor and the synchronous motor are used in some of, many of the application but nowadays some special kind of motor that create that uh, develop the load according to the uh, motor uh, that develop the torque according to the motor requirement has been developed that that motor are placed under the special kind of motors that are bldc motor like bldc motor brushless dc motor switch reluctance motor stepper motors uh, the permanent magnet synchronous motor these are under the special kind of because they provide the load or they provide the torque and the speed according to the load requirement so uh, that you can say it's a energy saving motors also and um, so if we compare with this special kind of bldc motor nowadays is very demanding motor in some of the application like electric vehicle now we are uh, now some of the industry is switching towards like uh switch reluctance motor and the permanent magnet synchronous motor because they have their own features and their the own drawbacks are there so in this lecture we'll discuss the one of the special kind of uh, motor that is switch reluctance motor they have their own features and uh, they can be used very special kind of application also and we'll see the working principle and how the torque will generate it uh, in this uh, srm motor so these are the my contents uh, the topic of content like first is introduction then we'll discuss about the features of switch reluctance motor then we'll see the construction detail then the how the torque will be generated in the in the switch reluctance motor the principle of operation and the, how the torque production will be there so the introduction this variable reluctance motor is is also known as the switch reluctance motor because its principle is based based on the difference in the uh, reluctance right and the operation principle is similar to the single stack variable reluctance stepping motor this uh, like uh, likewise a stepper motor is also one kind of motor where uh, the drawback of the stepper motor is uh, it can be used for the lower power ratings and it produces the torque in steps right so the continuous with the help of switch reluctance motor we are getting the continuous operation continuous uh, uh, rotation uh, in comparison to the stepper motor right so variable reluctance stepper motor require the rotor position sensor where it is not variable reluctance switch uh, switch motor or the require the rotor position sensor where it is not needed for the variable reluctance stepping motor vrm is designed for the continuous rotor operation as i said and the variable uh, reluctance stepping motor is designed to rotate in steps so these are the uh, major features if you see the srm uh, construction it the main feature of the srm it it ha it don't have the rotor winding in the rotor it has two part the stator and the rotor and the stator carry the concentrated winding and the rotor has no winding this is the big advantage of the of the switch reluctance motor because if there is a no winding in one of the part the motor will become 
lighter and the not the winding is not there so it will, it will not complicate it so and it can be run at a higher speed so srm motor can be run at a higher speed we can use for the high speed applications and uh, uh, it has the projected type of stator and the rotor projected type of poles in stator and the rotor so the rotor has no winding and the stator carry the concentrator winding in and it has a projected poles so due to the uh, due to the absence of the rotor winding it is a lighter in weight the cost will be uh, less and the controlling will be easier and it can be run for the higher speed so these are the some of the advantages or the features rather features of the switch reluctance motor so we'll we just read out the simple construction with no rotor winding on the rotor and the simple concentrator winding on the stator as i said it is run at a higher speed because of the no winding on the rotor and rugged rotor construction because if it has a no rotor winding so it's the construction will be very rugged so the maintenance is also required less and um, the cooling will be better so the stator winding can be cooled easily and efficiently the vrm the variable reluctance motor is designed for the continuous rotation and it operate from unidirectional drive circuit cost of the power electronic circuit is reduced so these motor can be manufactured for the higher uh, higher ratings in comparison to stepped motor so these motor can be manufactured with the large number of stator and the rotor teeth so it gives the large torque per unit volume that means we can increase the density of the motor so smaller motor can be used for the higher power rating so these are the some of the application of the srm motor nowadays it can be used for the very uh, uh, variable speed drives or uh, it is used for the higher power rating like wide range of uh, fraction it can be used for kilowatt to several uh, several uh, kilowatts and it give the precise position controls for robotics low power servo motors and high power traction drives uh, in a high power traction drive it, this srm motor can be used nowadays in electric vehicle this is a very uh, very much demanding motor a uh, bldc the permanent magnet synchronous motor and the one of the srm motor is also used in the electric vehicle the only draw drawback of the srm motor is that it has the torque ripples right so it's become more little bit noisy so this is the construction feature if you see here it is a uh, uh, four this is the this is a stator and this is a rotor the stator carry the three phase winding a a dash b b dash and c c dash sorry it's a two phase a a dash because four by two it's a four by two pole machine so four that means four poles are in the stator two poles are in the rotor so and the stator carry the projected poles and the concentrator winding the rotor has the no winding and it is also a projected kind of uh, road right so it has a double salient construction so double salient means all the poles are projected kind of so stator is also projected that means salient pole and the rotor is also salient pole that's why it is called the double salient doubly salient uh, construction because stator and rotor both have the salient in feature right stator carry the concentrator winding as i said here and it is visible also here it has the concentrator by pole has it, the stator pole has its concentrator winding so it is easy to wind and uh, easy to maintain also maintenance will be easier the rotor has no winding as it is seen over here and uh, generally the stator and rotor poles are un, uh, like uneven poles will be there then only we can Uh, apply the principle of uh, reluctance, uh, the variable reluctance or the switch reluctance motor, right? So it's a four by two motor, and principle of operation. So uh, the SRM motor works on the principle of magnetic material placed in the magnetic field. Experience of force to align the minimum reluctance path, right? 
so when so the rotor is try to move in such a direction so it will align to the minimum reluctance path and get the uh, maximum flux density right so this is the idea and uh, how uh, and uh, on the basis of this idea the the motor will start rotating right so one of the i have taken this uh, i can explain uh, the principle of operation by taking 6 by 4 srm motor in this i have taken 6 by 4 6 6 by 4 means six poles are in the stator and the four poles are in the rotor right so it has the stator carry the six pole the a this suppose this is 1 2 3 4 and 5 and 6 right so 1 2 are carry uh, carry the one phase so incoming poles and a a dash the another is b b dash one phase is a a dash the b b dash and the c c dash So incoming current. So by using A A dash, the uh, so this is the six poles in the stator and the four poles on in the rotor, and both are the projected type. And the stator carry the concentrator winding. It is visible with the help of this the direction of the current dot and cross, and the rotor poles are four poles, right? And it has no winding, right? now suppose firstly a a dash is excited so the the current the the windings are wound in the such a direction the, so this pole will become north pole and this pole will become s s pole and the phase is a a dash right so the direction of the current if you make uh, to make a north pole the direction of the current will be anti clockwise so so it is the the direction the current will be coming out and cross will uh, show you the direction of the current the current will be go inside so this is this makes the the winding in such a direction such a way so it makes the north pole and this makes the south pole so first a a dash will be excited uh, energized and b b dash and c c dash will be unenergized so when it a a dash is energize the pole the rotor pole will try to align under the a a dash so that it will follow the minimum minimum reluctance because in this the air gap will be this much and here the air gap will be more so it will align in such a direction so it will get the minimum reluctance path so this one and two poles of the rotor will align towards under a a dash right now suppose a a a dash will excite now suppose a again uh, a a dash will unexcite unenergized and b b dash will be excite so when this is the second position this is the first instant this is this is the second instant so in the second instant when a a dash or c c dash is unenergized and b b dash is energized so b will be make a north pole the direction of the current will be in such a way so it will become a north pole and it will become a south pole so now the pole one one two pole so you can see here it is at one instant the suppose this is 3 and 4 so at one instant 3 and 4 pole are in this direction when you unenergize a a dash pole and energize b b dash pole so the 3 and 4 pole will be try to move under b and b dash so that it will align the maximum flux density and the minimum reluctance so it will try to move so 3 will go here and the four pole will go under b dash so now at second instant it will become this way so this it will move from here to here it is 30 degree right so when you uh, first a uh, winding is energized a winding matlab a a dash 
then b winding in energize the movement will be 30 degree towards anti clockwise or counter clockwise then we energize c or unenergize bb dash after that when we un unenergize bb dash and energize cc dash energize cc dash so you'll see that when you energize cc dash two pole the number two pole will be shift or under the c pole and one will be under this c dash pole right so again the movement will be in the clockwise in the counter clockwise direction and it is will for 30 degree so every 30 degree step the motor will try to move in the clockwise direction so if you excite the motor in this sequence a b c then again a b c so the the movement will be you are getting counter clockwise direction now suppose you are energized uh, if we change the phase sequence uh, the excitation sequence so if you energize first a then c then b then a then c then b you can see the movement you are getting is counter clock uh, the clockwise direction this is a counter clockwise and this you are getting the clockwise direction and this you can see like as you have seen that when you energized a then b then c you are getting the uh, direction in the anti clockwise or you can say counter clockwise direction now if you excite first a then again you start you excite c c dash not b b dash you uh, de energize a dash and energize c c dash so if you energize c c dash so this 3 will under the under the c and 4 will under the c dash so it will move 30 degree by in this direction right and then after that if you de-energized bb uh, cc dash and energized bb dash then the movement will be again in the clockwise direction so if you're getting the uh, the rotation for counter clockwise direction the phase the excitation of phase, phase sequence will be like that a b c a b c again a b c and if you want the direction of the rotation in the clockwise direction the phase sequence will be in such a way because this phase sequence is in your hand in uh, you can uh, by exciting the uh, pulse uh, the exciting the um, phase wind the the state of winding you can get the uh, direction of the rotation right so and according to the minimum reluctance because the rotor will try to move in such a way so it will get the minimum reluctance path that's why it is uh, based on the minimum reluctance path principle is based on the minimum reluctance path right so this is how the torque will generate it in the uh, SRM motor. This is how the how this will work. So this is a, the torque equation. And uh, if you simple circuit I have taken here, and uh, the ray, this is suppose the the stator. I just consider the stator. It has the resistance, some resistance value, some inductance value. So we can write here. V is equal to I R plus L D I by D T, right? Or you can say where lambda is L I, the flux linkage, right? So, hmm. or you can say I R because L is also variable. So, you can write this L I, both are variables. You cannot take outside because it is not a constant, right? So this can be written as IR plus L DI by DT plus I DL by DT, right? So in a similar way, it can be written as L DI by DT plus I DL by D theta multiply by D theta by DT. You can write the equation one in this way also i just multiply in this term d theta in the dominate denominator and the numerator right so this can be written as ir plus l di by dt plus i d theta is dt nothing but the speed dl by omega and then dl by d theta so this is you are getting here 
so this is v sorry it's a v only So this is V, right? So this is all. This is same thing is written over here. So you are getting V is equal to L I D I by D T D T D L by D theta, right? So this equation you are getting. And if you multiply by I in both the side, you are getting this. If you multiply. By i in both the sides, so you are getting this equation v i plus is equal to i square r plus l d i by d t plus i square omega d l by d t. So in this i r, this i r is the omega drop. L d i by d t, l d i by d t is the EMF due to the incremental inductance i d l by d theta. Will be self self induced EMF, so it can be written as this way also. So this is final expression you are getting, right? Now we'll see that because this motor will generate the because you are driving the torque equation of the SRA motor, so we'll uh, write the because this is a general equation. I assume that the, because it's a singly excited, only stator is excited, so I have. Concentrated winding is used, so I have written the equation according to the excitation. So I am getting this term, and if you multiply current in both the side, you are getting the this expression, right? Now, energy stored in the magnetic circuit. This you already know, like if it, if the energy stored in the magnetic circuit can be. Uh, Expressed with the uh, expressed by half l i square, right? So rate of the change of energy stored in the magnetic circuit will be. You are differentiating this, so it can be written as half uh, differentiation. You know, first func first function two i d i by d t l plus diff second function i square and differentiation of first function. So this can be written. So and uh, dl by dt can be written as dl by d theta and d theta by dt right so hmm, this is the magnetic rate of change of magnetic energy stored in the circuit right so this can be expressed this way so here d theta by dt can be written as uh, omega so this expression will be fine there dm By dt is the magnetic stored, the rate of change of the magnetic stored, uh, ma magnetic energy stored in the circuit, right? So you have to find out the because we are driving the torque equation by taking the energy, the conservation of energy, right? So mechanical energy transfer will be the electrical energy input minus the losses, the I R square R losses minus rate of change of the energy stored in the magnetic circuit, right? So mechanical energy transfer will be V I. The electrical energy input is in this circuit is the V I minus the the I square R R minus magnetic energy stored, which we have uh, expression will be this way, right? So in place of V I, you can put this value, right? So V I will be put this way. Minus I square R minus L D I by D T D L by T theta, right? So in this case, this is also this T theta. So in this uh, expression, you can see I square I square will be cancel out. L D I by D T will be cancel out, and this is half, and this is I square omega D L by D theta minus half I square omega D L. So you are you are getting this. The V I is the uh, mechanical energy is the P M, so half I square d omega by d theta. So mechanical power will be T omega, right? So torque will be P omega by sorry P M mechanical power will be omega, 
mechanical power divided by the speed. So, torque will be this expression divided by the omega and you are getting the half dl by d theta. So, final expression of the torque in the SRM motor will be this way, this much. So, here you can write the final expression of torque in the SRM motor T is equal to half I square dl by d theta. So, in this expression also you can say theta is the the position of the the rotor and how the by changing the position of the rotor the inductance will be changed and if change in inductance is there then only torque will be there. If the with respect to theta the inductance is not changing the torque will be 0. That is why by changing the inductance uh, during the phase uh, during the position changing the you are getting the torque. This can be like this can be explained like the SRM motor works on right. So, this is the mathematical derivation of the SRM motor for torque generation and this is the explanation how the torque will be generated uh, with the with this uh, variation of the inductance right. So, I have assumed 4 to 5 uh, instant of the rotor and try to understand how the torque production will be vary with the inductance right. So, in this way we can see that this is the first position where theta is equal to 0 I assume that at this particular position theta is equal to 0 theta is the position of rotor only right. So, in this case you can see the inductance variation the inductance variation is depend upon the number of stator and the rotor poles and the second is the the pole arc of both the stator and rotor poles. The pole arc that means this these are the pole arc this is the pole arc this is the uh, pole arc of the rotor this is the pole arc of the stator. So, the inductance variation because we need the inductance variation for the production of torque this uh, the torque expression will emphasize that we need a inductance uh, variation with respect to theta then only will we will get the torque right. So, how we will generate the inductance variation with respect to theta in this way we can see by uh, if you see the construction wise by changing the number of stator and rotor poles because the inductance variation depends upon the stator and the rotor number of stator and the rotor pole how the number of stator poles are there and second is the rotor pole arc the pole arc of the board both the rate uh, rotor and the stator right. So, as theta is equal to 0 uh, as uh, inductance is minimum at theta is equal to 0 inductance is minimum and side A of the rotor pole 1 is aligned along the left tip of the stator pole. So, this A, this is the rotor pole A, side A is aligned with the rotor pole, right. You can see here the side A is aligned with the left tip of the stator pole, okay. So, at this position the raise the, the inductance is minimum, right, because here the inductance is maximum sorry inductance I said here the reluctance is maximum here the induct reluctance is reluctance is minimum. So, when the reluctance is minimum here the inductance is sorry here the reluctance is maximum but the inductance is minimum right. So, here you can see the reluctance is maximum but the inductance is minimum. So, as the motor moves in clockwise direction, so suppose the position will be now theta to theta 1. So, in this you can say the whole tip hole the pole of the rotor will be under the stator pole. This is a stator pole 
and this is the rotor pole right so the whole pole is under the at theta 1 position pole will be under the south pole uh, under the uh, stator pole so at this position the road the in the reluctance will be minimum you can see both the stator and rotor are overlap so the result rel reluctance decreases so from here to come to this position here to come to this position when it is from here to here position the the you are getting the changing changing uh, reluctance so when it is at this position the inductance is minimum and when it is from because the reluctance is maximum and inductance is minimum so when it will go towards clockwise and and at this theta 1 position when your rotor pole will go under the whole rotor pole go under the stator pole so during from here to theta 1 position the variation will be there right so variation will be there reluctance va variation will be there if the reluctance is vary so the inductance is also vary so reluctance is from higher to lower side and the inductance will be minimum to higher so it will changing from here theta is 0 so theta 0 from theta 0 to theta 1 it is vary from l minimum to l maximum now it will under this theta 2 position now when it is go under theta 3 position so this whole rotor pole will move from here to here so during that period the riddle, 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 reluctance will be constant it is not vary because air gap will be maintained from theta 2 position to the theta 3 position right so during that period the inductance is uh, your constant uh, because of the reluctance is also constant the air gap is constant so the reluctance is constant and the also the inductance is con constant so during hmm, theta 1 to theta 2 position like here to when it has come theta 1 to theta 2 position theta 2 position it will go the 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 inductance will remain constant in a similar way you will see in the theta 3 when it is coming out from the uh, stator pole the reluctance will vary again and it will uh, opt the position at theta theta 3 so this is how the torque will generate it. So in this case, you can see that during this 0 to theta 1, the inductance is varies. So you are getting the torque during theta 1 to theta 2, the inductance will be constant. So you are getting the 0 inductance, 0 torque because according to this expression, you are getting the 0 torque. So in this way, you are getting the positive and negative torque. So according to that, if you need a positive torque, you will excite the winding in such a way. And if you need the negative torque or the direction will be opposite so you will get the uh, excitation will be like that only because the average torque is this is 0 so if you need a positive torque you have to excite this kind of uh, sequence right so this is how the torque will be generated so uh, with the help of switching on and switching off you will easily get the torque so this is a big advantage and by getting the negative torque you are able to operate the motor in the other uh, the second uh, the for the braking operation also so this can be used for the four coordinate operation also right this is a big advantage of this particular motor right so thank you and uh, thank you all